Today, Gianna and I are going to show you how you can derive the equation for the magnetic force acting on a wire. To start out this derivation, we're going to start off with a wire that we see here that has a length L, and we're going to place some charges in it, and we'll make them move, and that is what we would consider to be a current. A current is pretty much a flow of charge that's flowing at pretty much a constant rate through a length of L. Now, if you recall from the previous lesson, we identified that there is a magnetic force that acts on charges, and that is, that is determined by F equals Q times V times B. And what that equation is saying is that we have a charge that is moving with some speed in some kind of perpendicular component to the existing um, magnetic field. Now, technically, we should have a sign in there, but we're not going to use it. So we'll leave that out for, uh, for purposes for today's lesson. All right, now, we also know that current is a charge per unit of time. So we're going to introduce time to this equation by using T over T. Now, T over T is just basically a fancy way of saying 1. And we're going to use this so that we can distribute it out. So Gianna's going to write in the T kind of in a, a fancy way of just distributing it. So she's going to write Q over T uh, times quantity V times T times B. Now, the reason we did this is if you look, Q over T is the definition of current. So that's going to become I. Now, the v, v times T is a little bit trickier, what that actually is. But let's look back at our wire as we're doing this. And if we look at the wire, what we see here is that the charges should be moving at a constant speed. And if they're moving at a constant speed, the equation would be V equals D over T. But this D is referred to as length. So it's actually V equals L over T. So the speed that we see here is the length that the charges travel, which is the length of the wire divided by the time. If we just clean that fraction up and write it as L equals V times T, we see that matching term of VT on the other side. And if we circle that, that would be equivalent to L. So what we can finally do here is we can rearrange those letters and do some substitutions, and it leads to our final equation for the force on a wire, which is F equals BIL. And that's how we develop our equation. All right, in our next lesson, we will show you how you can derive the torque that is on a current carrying wire.